So my name is uh, Malin Parmer uh, and I'm a professor at Lund University in Sweden. We were more boys and girls in the science specialty classes, but it wasn't really a big deal. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't something I noticed or something that I felt uh, uh, awkward about. Well, then when I got to Canada, that was a more... <clears throat> I guess I didn't really notice it first, but uh, there is less women in science, and you were kind of defined as being, uh, you know, the female student, you know, the <laughs> uh, in a different way. And I think that all my professors were men. So I never really noticed actually so many things when they happened to myself, but then as I grew older uh, and I saw the younger scientists, also in Sweden actually, um, establishing, you know, doing their PhD, doing the postdocs or in their groups, I noticed how they got treated differently. And then I kind of recognized, well, that actually happened to me as well. Uh, so so no, at the time I didn't really notice and then afterwards I n it's easier to notice in other people and, and it, then it's easier to recognize that this happened uh, to, to yourself. As I got more established in my, in my career I had more courage to uh, act when things like this happen and say that this is not appropriate or I don't think that uh, we should say it like this or you um, so that's one thing I became more active when, when things happen. And then also when I um, train my students and postdocs, my group is about half men, half women. Uh, but we talk about these issues and what it's like, especially um, when you go to you know, conferences or meetings and uh, uh, when you're kind of out in the public and not, because when you're, you're in your own labs, in your own circles, you're just anyone else, but then when you step out of there, uh, that gender actually can play a role. So we, we do this, internally we discuss this, and then when I'm in places I try to, uh, to act when I see, uh, see things. What I noticed is that it's really, men are more visible, so it's easier to and especially at the young stage of the career. So in my own field, I know the up and coming men and women that do really exciting stuff. But when I go to a neighboring field, I don't really know the up and coming women. I only know the up and coming men because I've seen them at, uh, at meetings and stuff. So this, this really made me realize that you need to, and ISSR is a society that really wants to have a gender balance, region balance, very inclusive society, and I think they're doing a great job in balancing the speaker lists. Uh, still, it kind of, when we sit in these meetings, and sometimes people don't want to say, we need a woman. Uh, <laughs> and then I feel like sometimes women are selected because they're, they're women, but they're not. They're selected because they're good scientists and they're women. So, so it, it becomes a bit of a tricky um, uh, thing. So I've discussed this, the, uh, with actually a lot of colleagues in the world. So we're going to do some uh, action to make the young women more visible, I think. I know it's hard to speak up, but even now when I'm kind of an established scientist, I'm comfortable with who I am and my colleagues, sometimes I don't speak up. And afterwards I say, why? <laughs> and I think, why, do, why didn't I say something? Why didn't I do something? And this is actually often when I'm alone, it's fine, but when it, if I'm with a male colleague, uh, many people just assume that I'm with him somehow, so that he's a scientist and I'm some person that. So, <laughs> so if, you, if I walk into a speaker ready room with a male colleague, uh, many times they assume that he's there to upload his talk and I'm just there as company. And then you have to say, hello, <laughs> can I have some help as well? My whole life I've been signing contracts for research money from 
uh, a number of European and uh, Swedish foundations where it says uh, in his laboratory, the investigator, he, he. And I was like, well, why do they write he? Because might as well be a, a she. Uh, and I think subconsciously when you see and read and hear those things, you get uh, kind of a normalization of things that are actually not normal. So when I got this grant, and it said she, I was like, this is great. So whenever I get a grant contract now, I actually contact the agency uh, and I ask them, can you please change that to she or he or she? Uh, sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't respond, but at least uh, you can try to, to make a difference in how we perceive things as a society, if also the terminology you use, the pictures you use, the way uh, you use them is also in a more gender balanced way.